Good afternoon. I'm Marshall Zellinger. Welcome to Politics Unplugged. This week we're going to take a look at what politicians in Washington are doing to open a dialogue about race in the U.S. But the big story, Donald Trump picking his vice presidential running mate and doing it like a millennial, breaking the news, which we already knew on Twitter. On Friday morning, he tweeted, I am pleased to announce that I have chosen Governor Mike Pence as my vice presidential running mate. Joining us to talk about what we can expect this week as a result of Donald Trump and now vice presidential running mate Pence is Ryan Call, who will be going to his fourth Republican National Convention. And you're the former chair of the Colorado Republican Party. I want to make sure I got all that title in there for you. Thanks for, thanks for coming before you go to the RNC. It's a pleasure to be with you. So if you're not a politico and you're not from Indiana, you may be saying, who, what, who's this guy? So how does this choice of Pence help Donald Trump? Well, Republican, a longtime Republican members, members of the conservative movement aren't asking that question. They know who Mike Pence is. They've seen that he worked for over a decade in Congress. His uh, service and work as, uh, as governor of Indiana has been incredibly uh, lauded by conservatives and, and folks on the right. Uh, he's certainly a, a very known and tested social conservative, but, uh, but a great advocate for small business creation, tax reform. This is somebody who inspires confidence on both uh, the, among social conservatives as well as economic conservatives on the right. It's a smart pick uh, by Donald Trump. But if this is an election that so far has created a nominee that's not traditional, uh, I'll be, there's a block of voters that they don't know all that. So how, does, how do either person, whether it's Donald Trump or Mike Pence, have to sell themselves to these voters that are like, I don't know who you are? Well, that's in part what the National Convention in Cleveland is going to present. It's, it's the best opportunity and, and the first opportunity in some ways to, to reintroduce both the nominee as well as their, their running mate to the entire American people. If you're from Indiana, if you're from the Midwest, you know who Mike Pence is. And, and, and his record of service as governor has been something that uh, has done a lot of good for the folks in Indiana and uh, in terms of job creation, economic reform and things like that, but uh, this is the opportunity to, to talk about how his addition to the ticket helps strengthen the ticket and helps resolve some of the concerns that certain conservatives still have regarding Trump as the nominee. Well, it was a long week of talks between Donald Trump and Mike Pence with the Indiana governor saying he believes Trump is the right choice for the White House, so take a listen to this. These are people who have uh, uh, the best uh, interest of America at heart, and I, I truly do believe uh, that Donald Trump has the right vision for America. I think he's going to provide the kind of strong leadership at home and abroad that's going to make America great again. That's from Wednesday, just two days prior to the official announcement. Mm -hmm. Is that, I know I'm going to be announced, so I'm starting the company line, or I'm trying to push one more time. Do we take anything from that? I, I think you just to recognize that uh, in November, voters in America and here in Colorado are going to have a choice. They're going to have to choose between Hillary Clinton and the vision that uh, she would advance uh, in the White House uh, and the alternative. And the alternative here is Donald Trump and now Mike Pence. Uh, and a different vision for a strong and prosperous America that can help restore uh, the greatness that a lot of us feel has been, been lost. On Twitter, I saw a lot of people bringing up, I think it was a 2015 tweet by Governor Pence, basically the opposite view of deporting Muslims that we had heard from Donald Trump. How do you contrast, I disagree with the guy who's going to be number one on the ticket, but I think he'll make America great again. I disagree with a lot of what Donald Trump stands for, what his policies that he's advanced, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have to agree 100%. There's a lot of that discussion uh, and uh, differences of opinion within conservatives uh, and within the Republican Party on the right. I think the, the, the fundamental choice, though, is, is what kind of, of leader do we want? Who's going to be picking Supreme Court justices? Who's going to be advancing uh, uh, America's interests uh, and protecting America from th uh, threats uh, abroad uh, and, and demonstrating the kind of strength uh, that uh, we will see in a Trump presidency? Let's talk about the RNC and what we can expect from Trump as he accepts the nomination. Let's start there. What can I expect to hear from Trump when he accepts? Well, first, I'm actually really interested to see what kind of a show Donald Trump puts on. I mean, he is a consummate showman, and, and the national conventions are at its their very core. It's a show. It's a, uh, and the production and the opportunity to kind of present and, 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 and lay out a vision and a compelling message is part of what the next four days in Cleveland are going to be all about. I think that there's going to be elements of, uh, of humanity and, and, and personal uh, uh, anecdotes from friends and family members, uh, a side of Donald Trump that we haven't necessarily seen. 
a side that's laid out in more than the number of characters that fit on Twitter. Uh, that's probably what a convention provides the opportunity. It also provides an opportunity to show the range of views within the Republican Party. Here in Colorado, we have the great advantage to hear from our United States Senate candidate, Daryl Glenn, is actually going to be presenting and speaking at the national convention. And he's going to be joined by a whole broad spectrum of different views uh, laying out not just uh, the vision that Donald Trump will advance as president, but the ideas of governing uh, from a conservative perspective that the Republican Party stands for. A couple questions on that. Let, I've been to the last two conventions. Let's say Daryl Glenn talks Monday at 4 o'clock Denver time. No one's going to see it unless you're watching cable news or you're going to watch it when we put it on the newscast or online. How does that help if you get buried in a, in a slot that no one's really paying attention to? Well, the reality is, is that there's going to be a certain number of, of voters and, 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 and viewers that are going to tune in to watch the convention live. Many others were going to see you know, elements of that speech replayed on social media, uh, on the internet over and over over the next little while. You're going to see elements of that incorporated into the campaign. Uh, ads uh, over the course of the next few months, and so the message is going to be part of, uh, uh, you know, sp spelled out and, and presented over a period of time. Quickly, you were here four months ago, and you said you may see candidates distancing themselves if Donald Trump is the nominee, and we're seeing mixed gra uh, mixed bag of who's going to show up in Cleveland from Colorado's delegation. Daryl Glenn, uh, one poll that we're, we're going to show momentarily shows he's got a mountain to climb uh, to, to beat Michael Bennett. Uh, doesn't that hurt him by? aligning himself with Donald Trump? I think any opportunity that you have to be able to be on the national stage and present your vision and the perspective of, of Colorado and the West uh, at, at a national convention like that is, is a good opportunity to seize for a candidate, especially like Daryl Glenn, who also is kind of introducing himself to the voters. So it's a great move uh, by our Republican Senate candidate, and it's a good opportunity for him to establish his vision of what conservatism means. And the poll that I referenced, I think it was uh, an NBC News poll that showed Michael Bennett 53 to 38 over Daryl Glenn. But let's show a poll from the Wall Street Journal that came out Friday showing Hillary Clinton with an eight point lead in Colorado. But national polls, this is what I want to show also, national polls show that the candidates were tied. Uh, one with Trump leading by seven, the other showing Clinton with a two point lead. I think this just goes to show that polls are crap. But what can we take from these polls. We can take that polls are crap at this point in time in particular. And the reality is, is that nobody knows. And if any pollster comes to you and says, I know exactly which voters are going to show up on election day, you know that they're lying. Because this is an election like I've never seen. I can't predict. And that's in part, part of Trump's appeal. He and the, his message is going to resonate with an element and a, a, of our citizenry that often hasn't voted and, and doesn't generally vote. Uh, but it's identifying those voters, encouraging them to come to the polls and have their voice heard with respect to the direction of their country. That is really what's going to come down to. So I wouldn't put a lot of stock in, frankly, any polls uh, throughout the cycle. What matters is the poll that is, uh, is tallied on Election Day with the votes that are actually cast. In five seconds, do you clap during the nomination on Thursday when you're in Cleveland? I think that there's an element of respect for the process and an, an acknowledgement of the will of the electorate uh, with respect to the choice of our party's nominee. So the balloons will fall around you as you're just standing there or sitting? I'm going with an open mind. You are prepared to be persuaded as I hope the American people are. Thank you for joining us, Ryan. Enjoy your fourth convention and stay with us. We'll be right back.